Carolyn Rides Horse of Crow Agency was beaten and burned alive in April of 2016 on the Crow Indian Reservation. She died from her injuries two months later in Utah. Three people have been arrested and charged in connection with her murder. MTN's Margaret DeMarco spoke with one woman about how tribes and law enforcement need to come together to address jurisdictional issues. Roy Lynn's case, really extreme violence um, that was, I think, really disturbing for a lot of us to read about. Anita Lou Casey says this is a tragic reality for people living on reservations. Lou Casey is a doctoral student who started the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women database in 2015. Part of the reason that I do this work is because I was almost one of these women. I experienced domestic violence. Um, that threatened my life. Lou Casey needed a base number to be able to start her research, but she soon found that to be difficult. None of the lists match. None of them are updated frequently. None of them are very thorough. None of them include both countries. So it really was a mess. Soon, Lou Casey found out that there was a lot more missing cases than she expected to find. Since I started the database in 2015, there's been a, an average of 200 to 300 new cases every year, um, you know, and that excludes missing person cases that are solved. Um, so just, you know, new cases to add. Um, if we use that as kind of a benchmark going back to 1900, that means I'm missing about 20,000 cases. Lou Casey says processing the data before 1990 is hard due to the lack of law enforcement records. Some cases were not taken seriously and others were never reported. There's been a lot of organizing from within Native communities, but it doesn't often get shared in kind of mainstream media or outside of Native communities. One name that has become a public figure for the missing and murdered Indigenous women movement is Ashley Loring. Ashley was one of Lou Casey's students when she taught at the Blackfeet Community College. Lou Casey says Ashley became interested in the movement when they discussed it in class. I wish she was home safe. I wish this never happened, you know, but I take comfort in knowing that she is doing what she wanted to do. She is raising awareness. She is, you know, building healing and safety for our women and girls. She says one way to help start creating change is to give tribes the power they need to protect their own people. I think that means drastically changing the jurisdictional structure, not just in Montana, but nationally. Though Lou Casey says people need to start listening to the Native women who are being affected by this violence. You know, if people started listening to us, I think we would see some great changes. In Browning, Margaret DeMarco, MTN News.